Hi, it's DeWire. It is Friday, July the 9th, 2021. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk NBA Finals, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, yesterday's bet, we got lucky. I'm not here to say otherwise, right? The bet I recommended was on the alternative over-under lines to take the under 226 and a half, right? Well, believe it or not, you won that bet by half a point, right? The final score was 118-108. That's 226. That hook, that half point, delivered the win for you. So let's talk about Game 3, and let me just say, the person in the public arena who I believe understands this series the best is Fox's Skip Bayless, right? Bayless's theory is very simple. The more ball-centric Giannis is, the worse the Milwaukee Bucks are. Right? Bayless wants to see more of an ensemble rather than a solo act. The problem with Giannis is he gets his numbers, but the team does poorly. So what I want people to do is to look hard at the box score from yesterday. Right? Even the Bucks themselves know something's wrong when the only person who scores more than 20 points on the team is Giannis. Something's wrong when Brooke Lopez doesn't score 10 points. When Chris Middleton plays 41 minutes and ends up with 11 points, right? Bobby Portis was actually during the season a big three-point hitting player for the Bucks. Yesterday, Bobby Portis in five minutes of action scored two points. Right? The team, quite frankly, just isn't performing as a group. You have Giannis with 42 points yesterday. He's a solo act. Unfortunately, it doesn't translate into team effectiveness. I believe when they get back to Milwaukee for Game 3, the Bucks are going to make some further adjustments. And those adjustments have to re-emphasize the type of team ball that the Bucks played when Giannis was hurt in the last few games of that Atlanta series. Let me also say, too, the bet I like for Game 3 is simply the Bucks on a money line. Right? Bottom line is this. I know the Bucks are favored by four, I don't want to mess with the point spread. I believe no one knows better than the Suns, who, by the way, had the best road record in the NBA this season. No one knows better than the Suns that if they win game three, they might as well start preparing for the parade. This will be theirs. Right? If you're up 3-0, and if the other team has the structural problems that we're seeing the Bucks have, right, where meaningful contributors can't even get to 15 points, right? Middleton, again, had 11 points yesterday. 11. Right? If you go up 3-0, you're the next champion. If Phoenix wins game three, they're going to win the whole thing. Right? So I'm expecting Phoenix to be spirited. I'm expecting the Bucks to understand Game 3, in terms of the title, is existentialist. They're going to have to come out. They're going to have to change the dynamic. I'm expecting much better work from Brooke Lopez. I'm expecting much better work from Chris Middleton. I'm expecting much better work from P.J. Tucker, from Bobby Portis. Drew Holiday offensively, much better work. Also, the Bucks 
were very successful in the paint, but yet they missed a lot of close shots. I'm expecting some of those shots to fall at home. Right? I like the Bucks on a money line. I'm not playing with the point spread. I like the Bucks on a money line in Game 3. I believe this is a competitive series. Understand, I'm on both sides of the play. Longtime subscribers here know that I was talking. I suggested getting a futures bet on Phoenix and on Utah several weeks ago, right? If you did, you're in the catbird seat, right? Utah, of course, was the one seed in the West, Phoenix the two seed. At the time, you were getting outrageous odds because Sharpies thought that the Los Angeles Lakers were going to waltz through the Western Conference playoffs. Well, I'm an old-timer who doesn't believe that the series starts until a team wins on the road. This Bucks team is more durable than people think, right? Just look back to their series against the Brooklyn Nets. Just consider the fact that their key player, Giannis, misses the last two games of the Atlanta series. So I believe pride is going to take over. I believe the Bucks are going to figure out that the Suns have certain patterns that you can exploit. Right? Chris Paul is not a three-point shooter. He's always shooting shots right outside the paint, on the sides of the paint. He has his favorite spots. Mikkel Bridges, in my opinion, is a streak shooter. He was hot in game two, hitting threes, hitting big shots. I don't think you can rely on him every night. DeAndre Aiden, if you get him away from the basket, you're nullifying his offense. Right? Don't get me wrong. Phoenix is an excellent team. I believe Devin Booker is an advanced offensive player. No question about it, but we know Jake Crowder some days is going to hit three, four threes. Other days, he can't hit the side of a barn. So I give Phoenix credit for winning yesterday. The Bucks started the game strong. Phoenix took the early punches, stayed in the game, and then asserted themselves in the second quarter. Right? I give Phoenix a lot of credit. Obviously, they were the two seed in the West. But this series still has a long way to go. The uh, injury to the big man, Sarek, on the Suns is huge, right? Because, quite frankly, it looks to me like Milwaukee has the advantage with the bigs in the paint. Also, since Milwaukee's key weapon is a big man, Giannis, Right? Every foul that you could get helps. And of course, by losing a big man, the Suns have just lost six fouls. Right? So, let's see what happens in game three. I think the Bucks win game three. Right? The interesting moments for me are going to be game four. For example, Game 5, because the Bucks need a breakthrough if they're going to be competitive. Right? Those are going to be the key games in my eyes. Let me also point out, too, that I noticed Drew Holiday was really on Chris Paul. And I noticed that Chris Paul then started passing the basketball, right? He wasn't the offensive threat that he was in Game 1. Pay very close attention to that matchup, right? Because, again, as I've said before, I know Chris Paul has the big name. He has the State Farm commercials. He is a future Hall of Famer. He is an excellent point guard. The offense does run through him. But I get the feeling that Drew Holiday is underrated, is one of the best 
defenders, perimeter defenders in the NBA and was giving Chris Paul all kinds of trouble. Now we have yet to see the A-plus Drew Holiday game in these NBA Finals. Yesterday he had 17 points, 7 assists, right? I'm expecting the Bucks to play better in Game 3. I like the Bucks on a money line. You should be getting it at better than a minus 200. I like the Bucks on a money line in Game 3. I do not think that this series is going to be a sweep, right? Rather, I think the Bucks regroup. How they win is going to be as important as if they win, right? If the Bucks win in such a way that you could look at the box score and you see a number of guys with 18 or more points, you see a number of guys with a lot of assists, the team wins in a way where a lot of guys pitch in. A lot of guys feel like they own a part of this. And it's not just a bunch of people standing around in the third quarter watching Giannis score 20 points or what have you. Then Milwaukee will have a chance to shake things up by winning game four, tying the series up, guaranteeing us a six or seven game series. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If Phoenix wins, then as far as I see it, the NBA season is over, right? At that point, it'll become a series of prop bets and looking at how Phoenix closes it out. If Phoenix loses, and if the Bucks production is more diversified, hold on to your hat. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Thank you for stopping by.